We're going to print a small box with some lettering on the top and we're going to use the dual extruder of the uh, Cura, um, not Cura, but Ultimaker S3. So you might have a Polymaker PLA Blue. You can change whatever filament you have here uh, by hitting here and you can uh, uh, you can even make some new filament by going here and saying manage materials. Uh, we can create new, we have, oops, Polymaker, and let's suppose the color is just, uh, we're going to use a red color. Hit OK. That's 2.85, custom material, the display name will say Polymaker PLA uh, Red. Um, this could set all your print settings, we don't need to worry about that. But I think now that should have saved. And now on this dual extruder we have a red. So that's what we want, we want two colors set up. Okay, that's fine. Now we have our alt, our bed here, and we're gonna bring in our little small box that we're gonna print. And this should take fairly quick time. I think it's gonna take 32 minutes, say. We can Change these are actually designed to be printed at 0.3, so you can go to extra fast 0.3. That may have been the extra fast speed, um, but there's where you change the la layer height. Uh, I don't think you need to worry too much about this stuff. 15% infill, nah, we could have a little uh. Hi, I'm not too worried about that, but number of walls. I want at least three perimeters uh, wall line count. So I want that. Let's put that to four because I don't want any inf too much infill. 15%. We're going to put that at uh, 20%. So those are the print settings. And if we sliced it, it looks something like that. And we could bring that up. I don't want to see material color. I want to see color scheme or line type. So that will show us some of the features here. Now we've got a brim set up. We don't want a brim. We don't need a brim. So if we go down here, we can turn our brim off. Now we've got a dual extruder. The layers you need to slice first. Yeah, all I did was turn the brim off. Um, we're using our dual extruder, but we don't we aren't using a prime tower So I don't need to enable this the prime blob. I don't need to generate support uh, So that should be okay should be able to slice this Should slice okay. Yeah, and I don't have a brim around it. That's fine But what we need to do now is with this model And if I just click on the model there we need to um, set up a couple of what are called support blockers. You would think you could just say, hey, extruder one, I want you to do so many layers up, and extruder two, I want you to do so many layers. But you can't do that. You've got to set up two uh, blocks uh, around our model. One block we're going to print with extruder one, another block we're going to print with extruder two. So how we do that is we select our model. We can go back to prepare. Select our model, and we're going to go down here to support blockers. And if I just click in my model, I should see a little support blocker right there. And I want to resize that support blocker. If I go outside to resize this, I use these two tools up here. So let's say scale. And you notice that's up here. That's the model. We don't, we want to click back here. I want to scale my support blocker. If you're up here like this, you may think you're scaling your support blocker, but you're not. You're scaling your model. You don't want to do that. And we're going to drag this out. And I don't want uniform scaling. I'll turn that off. I want to go out this way. I want to go out this way. Just enough to cover my model. And you can tell and look at that by the that view. We want to move this around so I've got my whole model covered. 
Boy, I'll tell you, this is clunky to do this. Not quite big enough. I gotta go back to scaling. I gotta get this a little bigger. Okay, now I know you can measure this in fusion or other things, but I know that from the very bottom to the very top, just below the lettering here, is 29 millimeters. So one of the things I can do here in my scale is I'm going to say I want my Z to be exactly 29 millimeters. Uh, and I want to print this wall here. I want to make sure that's, uh, uh, that's in, so let's just say 29.05. So I want to make sure only the lettering is, uh, is going to change color. So that's just the height of the Z. And this will allow me here to set where that little block is. Like I want my Z right on the ground. So I'm going to put that at zero. And what you'll see here, you'll notice that there's this little piece at the top. And that's really the piece that I want in the second color. But we've got to do something else here. This is a support blocker. It's just really setting an area within the model. What we now need to do is go over to this tool and say, per model settings, I want to modify the setting for the overlaps. Really what we're doing is, is we're telling uh, this that we want all this stuff that's encased in here, whether it's infill or walls, we want everything. Um, to be generated with extruder number one. So we first need to select the everything of the model. And we go in here and we're going to select cutting mesh. And cutting mesh by default is just going to select everything. And then we're going to click on extruder one. If we clicked on extruder two, all that would be in red. But let's suppose we're going to click extruder one here. Okay, so what we've done now is we've set that whole bottom of the model to be in the first extruder. We don't want a prime tower to be generated here. There's no need, you only generally need a prime tower when you have multiple colors in amongst one layer. But we're basically all doing one extruder, then the other extruder. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our model. We've unselected everything. And we're going to click this very top piece and so you can see that this just the top part here is highlighted and we're going to generate another support blocker in here somewhere you just basically click over some of this area and you'll get another support blocker we got to scale it I not believe how long it oops and and notice what i've done i've scaled the model I believe how long it took me to do this learn this and uh, so we're going to, we've clicked on our support blocker. We're going to, this works like crap on my machine. Come on, make it bigger. And click in there again. It's not big enough. It's got to cover the whole model. And now I'm going to position it. This will allow me to position it. I'm like in Prusa Slicer more and more. I didn't think I would. Now you'll notice how this has got some overlap. We don't want that, but what we can do here under uh, position is, remember we said this was at 29? So let's say 29.06. That's just a little bit higher. That's where that part's going to uh, gonna start. Okay, now everything in this piece right here, we want with extruder two, but we first have to set this mesh thingy. Modify settings for overlaps, that really what we're doing is modifying the settings inside this block. And we want cutting mesh. We want to select everything in here. We're going to hit extruder two. You can see that turned red. So we got blue there, red there. Man, it took me a lot of research to find out how to do this. Okay, now we're going to preview it just to make sure it works. And the color scheme here is by line type. And we don't want it by line type. We want it by, under line type, we want it by material color. Voila. 
And so that's going to show what the part's going to look like by material color. There's no, uh, there's no uh, prime tower being generated. It, if you have red in extruder 2 and blue in extruder 1, voila, it should just work. Good luck.